All right, glad to have you join us again. It's the Business Breakfast on iBrand Television. Charles Frackwell is still with me in the studio. He's iBrand Senior Analyst and also a stockbroker. We will be talking about what's playing out in the world of business. So starting off now with this story that's coming from the Independent Petroleum uh, Marketers Association of Nigeria. And they are blaming the NNPCL, that's the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, of the kind of um, scarcity that is going on currently in um, states like um, Nasarawa, Abuja, the FCT, and some other southern and eastern parts of the country. Charles, here we go again. The Utah this year, and we are now experiencing some form of scarcity of uh, petrol supply. What's really happening at this time? The NNPC sometime again came up, came out and said that they have more than enough um, products to carry us through the Utah period and perhaps even next year. Mm. But, but, but it seemed like that, 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 that statement, statement is not matching current reality. What do you have to say concerning this? Well, again, I don't know whether this particular government, they are full of deceits. Mm. I don't want to be judgmental. But you see, you say you are the sole importer of this product. And there are cues in some filling stations. Of course, I even saw it during my trip to Abuja and Benue. Especially in Nasarawa, mm. I could see, because we're on, on the road, I could see a lot of filling stations, you know. But the independent marketers are saying it is because this product is not available. Mm. The supply is not meeting the demand. That's why you are seeing scarcity. Of course, one will say when you approach this festive period, you know, there is this panic buying yeah. and all that. People yes want to you know uh, get enough fuel and all that yes fine but he is saying that's the nnpcl now is the nnpc nnpcl nnpcl okay they are saying no mm. it's price war mm. that is if you see a situation where you have q mm. probably the price is a it's bit lower, lower yeah. compared to other one. but the issue we are saying is let this product be available hitman cannot be saying this product is not available when the product is available. If it is an issue of price war, mm. I don't think the Hitman um, uh, PRO or their president here will make any kind of statement. But again, if you have operators like the stakeholders like this, mm. they should come out, have a discussion, and say this issue we are having, these cues we are having in substantiation, what is the actual problem? Because Nigerians need to know the truth so that we can flow along now independent marketers are saying products not available you are saying no mm. it's because of a it's a price war thing mm. now and these are stakeholders in this same uh, industry yes they should come out and tell us what is the actual pro is it the price war is it the product of, if the product is available then of course people will sell at the prices which it is profitable to them so what i'm saying is government officials what it is nnpc Please come out clear and clean to the average Nigeria. We want to know the true situation of things. That is when we begin to have confidence in this government, whether it is government parasitical or the government itself. It should not be an issue where the government officials or the area of the parasitical, they tell you good morning. I am looking at the time. Exactly. So the volatility in the supply now, as it stands now, is it not created by the NNPCL itself? Because the idea of fee subsidy removal, the idea of deregulation of the downstream yes. sector is to ensure that market forces are the one that determine the pricing of this product. But it is now there seems to be some kind of volatility in the sector itself. So Ashu, what, what would be the best way for NNPCL to, to sort out this issue? Well, the issue there is let NNPC for now, since they are the sole importer, let them, let them import enough products. Mm. Of course, you have mentioned it, deregulation, PIA, when that one comes effective, and other marketers are able to also, would easy import, mm. or our refineries are working, <laughs> then we can get this product locally. Then that is where the regulation would actually be implemented in terms of pricing. Because I've always said, if I get my product from, uh, for like what depot in a Papa Lagos here, and I'm taking it to Chibok in Bonu State. I will not sell the same price as I'm taking that same product to somewhere in uh, Ibadan mm. or in Begaye. So that is the real deregulation. You sell according to where there must be a standard. But so for me, for now, let NNPC 
import enough product that will go round. Whether it is a, a price war or no price war, we want to see that this product is available and the average Nigerian can get it as at when due so that um, all these undue queues yes. in, this, in the institutions will be a thing of the past. All right, let's quickly move to the next story now. And uh, uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria has come out to say that um, its monetary policy reforms are beginning to have a positive effect on the country's economy. And this is based on um, the, 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 this, this statement is in reaction to the latest um, inflation the rate. Figures. And then I'm asking myself, the, the, the figures keep increasing, upsurging, moving at, uh, uh, at upward trend. But then again, the, the CBN is coming out to tell us that their monetary policy is having a, a, a significant impact on inflation figures. Who is fooling who? And how realistic <laughs> is, this, is, is this policy on inflation figures? So thoughts on this? Well, as, um, let's say, as a stockbroker, as the one who is also a student of uh, economics, Yes, what he's trying to say, with due respect to him, of course, he's also a fellow stockbroker. He said, if you look at the increase, marginal increase, mm. compare, you know, if you do this calculation about mm. 0.7, mm. thereabouts, that, that is October, between September and October, the increase compared to August and October, yes. Mm. So this one is a little bit reduced. That is why he is now saying, probably, it is the reforms. They that are is not a significant, significant. Yes, that's why it is marginal. But again, you know, economic policies do not just work overnight like that. We begin to see the effect gradually. That is his own argument. Yes, but how we go beyond that? Because I will not agree with him 100%. The inflation we're having currently in the country, I keep saying until I stand to be corrected. Mm. It isn't an issue of forming money supply. Yeah. That you're saying there's too much money you want to mop out and all that. There's no money. Mm. But this power is even down. Mm. The issue is, it's a cost push inflation. The cost of impute is so high. Insecurity is also an, an issue. Because let's take food food products for example now, yes. food items. If we have our farmers who are producing so well, they are not afraid of uh, headsmen. Mm. We have that is bumper harvest. The prices of some of these food items we are seeing will go down. So you can see that is a major cause of it. So until we're able to address that, right. we're beginning to see, we'll continue to see these uh, increases. Well, on the monetary side, yes. he is saying it's marginal. I think um, we need to improve our revenue. Okay. If we improve our revenue in terms of our exports, then of course we'll see a reduction in um, inflation rates. All right, we'll leave it at that. Now, that's the much we can take on this segment of the program. We should focus now to the Nigerian equities market. Let's see what's playing out there and do some short analysis of it. Still to come after the break on Thursday at the Nigerian Exchange Limited, equities trading closed marginally higher with two basis points increase in the oil shell index at 71,025.16 basis points, respectively. We have more details after this time out. Please stay with us. Glad to have you join us again. If you just joined us, this is Business Breakfast on iBrand Television. Let's talk now what's playing out at the Nigerian equities market. But before then, let's tell you that the Nigerian equities market closed slightly higher by 0.02% to close at um, 6 billion naira on Thursday as investors bought consumers' goods and insurance stocks. The oil shell index and its market capitalization increased respectively from 71,000. Um, 138 basis points and 39.05 trillion naira to close at 71,016 basis points and 39.09 um, 05 trillion naira respectively. However, the market has increased by 38.58% in 6,545 deals as investors on Thursday's exchange 483. 0.8 million um, shares worth 4.378 billion naira. Meanwhile, Regency Assurance, Wando, Universal Insurance, Japo Gold, and UBA were most traded stocks on Thursdays 
at the NGS. Charles Franco guys with me in the studio and giving us some insight into what played out at the exchange yesterday. Charles, you've seen the figures. Can you give us some ideas into the fundamentals or the sentiments that led into the training fundamentals yesterday at the NGX? Yes, if you look at what happened yesterday, it's just playing out what we already predicted that yeah. it's going to be a mixed market. Because if you look at on Monday, the, the market was in the negative territory. But Tuesday, Wednesday returned to positive. And we're not surprised that um, on Thursday it also returned um, positive. Mm. Now, and you can see that this same week that the inflation figures were out and people expect that um, the market will react negatively, mm. but the market defiled that inflation figure yeah. and still returned positive. positive at the end of the day. One, two things pay out there. Investors renewed confidence in the market okay. despite the macroeconomic conditions in the court. And of course, investors have real confidence in some of these quoted companies. You know that they are already sending their Q3 numbers to the market. Yes. And investors are seeing how good these numbers are. Uh -huh. So, obviously, everybody wants to position themselves mm. pending when full year we have. Mm. So that they are already uh, investors in these companies and once the full full year numbers comes out, they will partake from it. So, again, we must congratulate the operators in the capital market. All right. Also, the issuer, that is the quoted companies. All right. Because despite the macroeconomic challenges mm. in the country, mm. they are still able to post nice uh, figures. Because. All right. So, we need to go now. But finally, what would be your outlook for today's trading activities as wrap up this week? Well, before coming to the studio, I looked at the market. Um, currently, it's doing about 0 0.02 up. Okay. We have seen some few gainers. And then um, from what I'm saying, from the volume and the ones that are already negative, uh, um, gainers and losers now, I see the market closing slightly right. in the positive territory. Okay. Slightly in the positive territory. All right. Well, if it's that, I'd like to say a big thank you to you, my very good friend, Charles Frakwa, for your time with me on the show today, doing market analysis for us <laughs> and also looking at some of the macroeconomic uh, um, 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 issues yes. we're being faced with in the country as it regards some of our top business stories we're fighting at this time. Thank you. Thank you so much for thank your you time. Thank you. Let me just remind before we go. Yes. My daughter's convocation. Oh, great. Was, uh, I think on Wednesday in UI. All right. Yes. And um, we got the information that she did extremely well, yes. making the father proud. We're definitely proud of you. And from all of us at iBrand I Brand Television, we're saying we're wishing you well in your future endeavors. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much, Charles. Thank Have you. yourself a wonderful day ahead. Thank you. Now, coming up next on the show, as African business increasing, as Africa become increasingly important in world politics, the rise in economic ties between the continent and other developed countries have continued to raise questions on why nations are setting ties with African countries. On this segment of the show, we will be highlighting the importance of the just concluded South Africa summit on Nigeria and the continent at large. And also, amid macroeconomics reforms, both from the physical and monetary authorities, Nigerians have continued to groan over increasing prices of goods and services as the country's inflation rate continues its upward trend, reaching an all time high of 27.33% for the month of October. What are the ripple effects of these on businesses and households? You will find out more during the interview segment on the show today. And finally, crude oil prices were on track for a fourth straight week of decline as there remained little change in early Asian trade after slipping about 5% as to a four-month low on Thursday on worries over global demand. We have more after this timeout. Please stay with us. It's the business breakfast on Ibrand Television. <laughs>